Python has quietly become the heavyweight champion of programming languages, and according to the latest GitHub Octoverse report, it has even overtaken JavaScript as the most popular language on GitHub. That's not bad for a language that was once mocked as a scripting toy. The sad reality is that when you really think about it, all scripting languages we mocked in the past ended up running the internet. PHP, JavaScript or Python all started as something not serious enough for real software engineers, and now entire companies, banks and governments depend on them. Back to Python, the reason for its growth is obvious. After all, it's everywhere, from the web to data science. It is the language of choice for programmers who don't care about writing enterprise-grade code, but do care about getting results fast. But, as Python has expanded into real production systems, the very thing that made it so approachable has started to hurt. That flexibility can turn into fragility when you're dealing with teams, massive code bases, and actual business expectations. And this brings us to a divisive topic in software development. Types are one of those things developers love to argue about. On one side, people claim that types slow them down, make the language clunkier, and ruin the very flexibility that makes it fun to use. On the other hand, developers with a drop of experience and some common sense know that without types you're basically just praying your code doesn't break in production. And Python, just like JavaScript, faces the same debate as it matured from a scripting playground into something serious enough to power billion-dollar companies. Famously, Python is dynamically typed. That means you don't declare variable types up front and the interpreter just figures it out at runtime. So you can reassign a variable from an integer to a string and then to a list. This flexibility is exactly why Python became the go-to tool for researchers, students, data scientists, and anyone who wanted to get results fast without boilerplate. It's what made Python shine in AI and machine learning, where quick iteration beats careful engineering in the early days. But the same thing that makes dynamic typing so convenient for prototypes also makes it risky when you're trying to build and maintain production systems. And this is why these days we are seeing reports of Python developers slowly moving to a more type-safe approach to coding. The funny thing is that Python introduced optional type hints more than 10 years ago, so for the first time ever, you could write code like this. Instead of leaving everything to runtime, you now have a way to declare what your function expects and what it would return. And, crucially, Python didn't enforce all this overnight. Types were gradual and completely optional. You could start with nothing, sprinkle them in where it mattered, and scale up as your project grew. This best-of-both-worlds approach was the same survival strategy that made TypeScript the default for JavaScript. What's interesting is that JavaScript went through the exact same crisis. It started as a browser scripting toy, then suddenly it was powering massive web apps and servers. And, let's be honest, debugging JavaScript undefined values at runtime stops being funny when you have to do it at 3 in the morning because your payment system is down. So Microsoft did something decent for once, and it introduced a type system that changed the culture of front-end development. Python is walking the same path right now, because when you really think about it, it all boils down to the importance of static typing. Static typing is basically the guardrail that helps keep at least some sanity in large software projects. As we all know, real production projects are already a hot pile of spaghetti code, with conflicting ideas, useless complexity, and cognitive load. Using a dynamically typed language in that context just adds fuel to the fire. Sure, types don't fix bad architecture or poor decisions, but they do reduce the surface area where things can go wrong. And, granted, the opposite is also true. There are languages where the type system goes so far that it becomes its own problem. Java is the best example of a language where the type system doesn't come with the syntactic sugar and developer experience needed to make it pleasant. Python, however, sits somewhere in the middle. Its type system is optional, gradual, and pragmatic. You can add annotations when you need them, skip them when you don't, and rely on tools to enforce rules at scale. This is probably one of the best approaches to introducing a type system into a language, but you also have to factor in that this flexibility adds complexity on the organizational front. Some files could be meticulously annotated, others completely untyped, and a few in the middle with half-baked annotations that don't actually mean anything. In practice, this creates inconsistency. One developer assumes a function always returns a string because it has a type hint, another passes in an integer because nobody bothered to run a type checker, and now you've got production bugs caused by optional discipline. This is the trade-off of gradual typing. It's flexible, but flexibility at scale always comes at a cost. The reality is that types only start delivering serious value once they're treated as part of the development process. And that value is increased if the type system works for you, with features like type inference, smart casting, or tooling that integrate seamlessly into your editor and build pipeline. 
If you like this video, you should check out one of these next. Don't forget to like, subscribe and until next time, thank you for watching.